Well, hello there. It's Sandy Allock, and this is another in the Journey Through Lent series. I'm going to show you a tutorial, and then we'll do the flip through for the week's posts. And today we're going to work on Zechariah 9. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And for those who don't know how to draw a donkey, it's easier to draw donkey's ears. So I have done the donkey's ears really big and the city in the background. And then if you're in need of something else to kind of fix things, put a palm branch over top of it. So I'm going to use my Koi watercolors this time. I haven't used these in a long time. And the main difference between these and my Daniel Smith is these come out a little chalkier. So they're a little, little more like a gouache than a watercolor. But the set is really nice. It's got this palette that's already here, etc. So it's really easy to use that way and you don't have to buy a palette, you don't have to have tubes, that sort of thing. So it's a decent set for sure. So I'm going to just start by painting in my donkey. I, I realized later I probably should have just painted across the city first. And yeah, that's me doing the thing that was my idea for it before doing the background portion. Because since he's going to be a big black donkey on the picture, he could be painted right over top of everything. So I could have just done all the other stuff first. But if you decide to download the sketch that's in the doobly-doo in the description down below, then you can do that in the right order yourself once you do. But notice I didn't really stick to outlines or anything, even though I had sketched in with a pencil the different areas of my, my little donkey. I didn't worry about it. Just be loose. That's kind of the secret to watercolor. If you start getting all weird about it, then you might as well use acrylics. You're going to be really specific and try to paint every hair. I'm just trying to keep it loose and have a general sketch of a donkey because I didn't want this to take forever. And in total, this piece took probably about 30 minutes. So I'm adding the city in by just taking a couple different browns and making some blocks of color. And I'll add a little bit more layers later. And then I decided I wanted a darker color so that I'd have a little bit of light right around the edges of my donkey so that it looks like some of the outside hairs are going to get a little bit of light. And by putting some darker color around there, I'm able to create that effect. And put some dirt all the way around. I have to be a little careful so that my paint doesn't go all the way over on the left hand side into the words too much. Because since this is more like a gouache, it tends to go on a little thicker and can cover the words if you don't use it really watered down. And I am brushing it out with a brush with clean water to try to soften that edge, but you can also use a baby wipe to do that. And I'll add my hillside back here where my crosses are going to go later on. But I'm going to put the sky in first. So I wanted sort of a sunset looking sky with some yellow and then oranges and then reds, that sort of thing. Now one of the things that the study has been really good for me in if you've been participating in it, or even if you've just been watching what I've been creating, just really going back into the Old Testament and studying all of the ways that Jesus was fulfilling these Old Testament scriptures. And this one was about coming into town, riding on a donkey. And I, I've really appreciated this last bunch of weeks, and I'm looking forward to the, the coming weeks, continuing to study those Old Testament scriptures. And I've, I've read them. And I've, you know, that none of these are coming as a total shock to me, but reading them all day after day and Bible journaling them each day as well is giving me a new appreciation for them. And I think that's one of the things that Bible journaling does is it gives me time to meditate on the scriptures, to really sink my teeth into them. And what would I paint? What would I create to express what God is teaching me in that? really makes a huge difference in bringing it home to me because I think Easter this year is going to be a lot more special because of it. I feel like my heart is being much more prepared. And many times, you know, throughout my whole life, when I've done any Lenten preparation, it seems to have been more focused on me, <laughs> me and my sin and repenting and all that sort of thing. And it not been focused on Jesus focused on what he did, how he's fulfilled the scriptures, how he has brought salvation. And that I think has been what's been really special to me in this challenge. 
And I would like to do other challenges throughout the year, maybe not right on the heels of this one because I need a little bit of a break. But I, I hope that you'll join me in a future challenge. And if you have a suggestion on a book that we could do, I'm thinking if I do this like three or four times a year, I think that would be good. So if you have a suggestion on any kind of a book that would have like a 30 day or 40 day type of challenge deal, would love to do that along with you again. So these paints, as you can see, don't bleed through on the back. And I ironed the pages after or this page after I got done. I do that with most of my watercolor pages because then they're a little bit flatter and it's easier to do the pen work once it's a little bit flatter. So I'm speeding this up because the pen work could take a while. I'm just drawing in fuzzy hair. And here I'm using a thinner pen. So this is a 0.5, uh, the 05 size micron pen, which doesn't bleed as well. And then I'm going to switch over to the one because for the larger hairs on the back of his, his neck, I'm going to need a little bit bigger pen. I have one of those sets of pens that has all the different sizes in it, and you can get one of those. Or I would just recommend having, a, like the ones I use the most probably are the 1 and the 0.5. Sometimes they're really tiny 0.1 if I need some super tiny detail on some of them. And when you see the sheep later on in this one, that one is with a 0.1. So there's some where you have a really delicate little outlines and things that you might need a smaller pen for, that kind of thing. But these are not expensive pens, so to me it's worth getting the whole set. And I have a set that's actually in a little case and everything. And I will put links to that in the description down below in case you decide you want to go get one. And I also, in the description, always have a link to whichever Bible I'm using. I have links to all the Bibles that I use, but I have specifically things used in this video. So I, I list the paints and the brushes and the Bible and everything, as well as all of my general supplies down below. And there's, of course, going to be more elsewhere. Um, I'm working on building a Bible journaling website right now, so I'll have all that there when the time comes whenever it's finished with lots of more information on it. Because since I don't really do much on my blog anymore with Bible journaling, I decided I needed another site to do that. So putting in more details here, I added another layer because my city wasn't popping very much. And then I wanted my crosses up there on that, that hillside in the sunset. And then I'll add my, my palm branch and of course, since it's kind of a Palm Sunday type of image, seemed appropriate to do a palm branch here. And I'm painting right over top of it, and I'm painting rather thin. I could have made this paint pretty thick, but I sort of wanted the city to come through, and I made the branches separate so that the cross, that the little crosses there, show through. And I decided I needed a little bit more pen work there just to solidify those. When you have something that's dark in the front and then light in the background, it gives you that sense of depth. And that's what I wanted the, the palm branch to be up close and up front. But I wanted more detail in the city, so I did that just with a pencil. Just a regular old, it's an HB pencil, but you could do it with a number two pencil. And I'm adding the detail onto the, the wall of Jerusalem. And I'll... Um, I looked up the gate and what the gate looks like now. I have no idea if that's what it looked like back in uh, Jesus' time or anything. But I drew some bricks in there as well, as you can see. And then I took a white gel pen and created my text on top of my donkey. Since it was nice and dark, that was kind of my idea, was to give myself a dark area where I could do the light lettering. It's a little harder if you don't get really dark with it and you try to use a medium gray for the donkey and then put black lettering on them, you have to have the donkey be light enough uh, to give you that contrast so the words actually show up. And that's where I, I'm kind of going. You can see I'm laboring over my letters. I'm not a letterer. I am planning on practicing my lettering enough that maybe in the fall I'll be able to do a class on lettering for Bible journaling and with some different styles and just tips on typography and stuff because I'm a graphic designer, so I know enough to be dangerous. So there is my finished page. Your king comes to you. And now we can take a look at the other pages that I did this week, because I've been doing a flip through each week for those who are not on Instagram or on the 
Facebook group. The first page is a well-known passage about trading the beauty for ashes and talks about having a crown on and I thought doing myself in there would be interesting. I've never done a portrait of myself in my own Bible, so there's that. This passage talked about the righteous branch being just and right. Sorry about the focus on this. Got, came out a little bit weird there. Uh, the next one was about the shepherd, the shepherd who will save his flock. And the little lamb is looking up at the cross, which I thought was appropriate for the season. Next up is a passage about God shaking things up and the old city was going to come down and the new city would be there and the new city would be filled with glory. So I did just this snow globe. <laughs> that would be kind of interesting. It was hard to paint, but I did some shiny lettering on it using my gold pen as well. And then there's the page that I just showed you with our donkey uh, going into the city. And finally, the last one was, they will look on me who they have pierced. And just that simple nail in the middle of it, I thought was appropriate with the red on the tip of it as a reminder of what that nail meant. It meant his blood spilled for us, his blood spilled to save us. And I am becoming more grateful for that as I go through this study. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button, share with your friends, come join us on Facebook. Even if you're not making pages, come join us and have a chat. God bless you. Bye-bye.